Okay, so quick re-record after some of you clever people realise I got the very first calculation wrong in the uh, previous upload. So let's try this again. Right, here is the solution to exercise three. Hopefully, okay. This follows the episode six video where we looked at the maximum demand of diversity, and we're just going to do this um, third scenario of a small catering shop. The scenario includes two light circuits, one with 24 times 58 watt fluorescent luminaires, one with eight pendant sets, and two 500 watt PIR floods. There are four cooking appliances. Remember, this is a catering shop, so we're not going to think of household type of use. We're going to think of, you know, full demand use. Uh, so they'll be powered with separate circuits. There is a requirement for three power appliances, which are coffee machines. And at the time, we'll look at the best way to wire them up. And four socket circuit um, socket outlet or circuits of radials. Now, remembering from the on-site guide, we're going to use the demand table, which is uh, table A1, very first appendix in the on-site guide. This table is to assess the demand of a final circuit. Okay, so we apply it to um, lighting outlets in this case. So we'll be looking at the equivalent load for everything except for lamp holders, where it says 100 watt for every single lamp holder, because we still assume 100 watts at the moment, apparently. You'll also see under this table in the on site guide in the notes, it does mention that when you have discharge lighting to consider a 1.8 factor due to the harmonic content and harmonic effects of, of the control gear. Um, unless you have the manufacturer's information. So that's probably all we're going to use this for. I think other stationary equipment, British Standard, so the 3 kilowatt power equipment, uh, this isn't applicable. And the household cooking appliances, our cooking appliances are not for household purposes. So we're not going to use those for that. We'll use table A2 a lot. This is um, the column we're going to use, the small shops column. So we do this with the lighting, and then we'll do this with the power uh, circuit, the cooking appliances, and then down here for the socket outlet arrangements. Okay, so let's go back to them. First one, light circuit, 24 times 58 watt fluorescent luminaires. So break that down, and here's some adjusted math, because apparently I got this wrong earlier. Right, <coughs> 24 times 58 watts. And we're going to apply the power factor of 1.8 um, because the book says so. Now remember with the 2396, the, um, the marking criteria the assessors will use at a starting point is going to be the on-site guide, the electrician's design guide, the IT documentation, the, the, uh, the, the information everyone has access to. If you choose to use a different factor uh, in your designs, you're going to have to make sure you attach that data so that the assessors or whoever reviews your design can can see that. Um, it's kind of creating work for yourself, but it's probably more accurate to do it that way. All right, so in this case, uh, 2506 is the wattage over 240 volts. So I've gone with 240 volts because uh, why not? Let's assume they're old light fittings that are power rated at 240 volts. Uh, you'll probably go with 230 volts in, uh, in your designs. That's, that's what you probably should do. That gives us 10.44 amp. We'll throw that over here for now. Let's go to the next light circuit. Eight 100 watt lamps. Again, the 100 watt lamps we're not supposed to be able to buy anymore. They still exist in circulation here and there, but uh, really, you probably could assume a lesser demand for that. That would be more than acceptable, I would have thought. But the book says 100 watt for a lamp holder, so it's 800 watt. And two 500 watts, which is a kilowatt. 1800 watt total, over 240. Seven and a half amp, and we'll throw that up there as well. So those are two circuits. Those are the two demands of those circuits. We haven't applied diversity yet. The cooking. Now, we're not going to apply the household idea because again, this is a catering shop. The cooking equipment is most likely installed for purpose. However, we can diversify the circuits. We don't diversify the final circuit. If a piece of equipment says it needs this power, a circuit will be installed to supply that power. We don't assume they'll use a lesser amount of power. 
but we may do for the distribution to the board feeding those circuits is assume those circuits may not be used at the same time and we'll see this with diversity a little bit later but for now we just need to work out the full power demand of each of these cooking appliances so the largest one 16 kilowatts which is you know at 240 volts that's pretty pretty stupid that is 66.6 amps now uh, you're thinking, okay, well, not a 32 amp socket, it's not a 63 amp socket, is it 125 amp socket, is it fixed? No. What you probably have in the real world is a three phase piece of equipment, and that would drop it down to 23.1 amp. Because IB is the square root of, uh, is power over the square root of 3 times 400. So, you can see just in this little example why sometimes when equipment requires a much larger amount of power, it's much better for demand, it's much better for every, you know, for cable costs and everything um, to put on three phases to lower the demand on the installation. That's a big drop. But we're staying on single phase, so we're going to put 66 over here. The other two appliances, 4000 at 230 volts, 17.39 over here, and 2 kilowatt at 240 volts, 8.3 over here. This is just simple P over V. The next circuit, power. Now this is this is this is the questionable area really. It's three times three kilowatt coffee machines. Now three kilowatts at two forty volts is twelve and a half amps. So it's it's you could think of it as three fused connection units, which you would probably be more than happy to put on a radial arrangement. The um the issue here is if you remember this table before this um doo -doo 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 here other stationary equipment it just takes the normal current into account we can't diversify a single item of electrical equipment here we can't diversify the equipment for its final circuit so we have to assume full demand so in this case that's 9 kilowatt now 9 kilowatt over 240 is 37 and a half amps so that's a lot of demand for a single circuit. So what we're going to do right now is assume it'd be better to apply diversity to the circuits if we had them as three separate circuits, and that might allow us to drop that current down. So what I'm going to say is it's 37.5 amp total demand, because we can't diversify the demand of the equipment, but if I split it between three circuits, I may then be able to diversify the circuits themselves. So I'm going to put that 37.5 as three separate 12 and a half amp circuits. That's my suggestion. Socket outlet radials, uh, yeah, no diversity uh, to a final circuit arrangement. You just put 20 amp through. Okay, so those final circuits themselves aren't allowed for diversity. But what we can now do is allow for diversity on the whole installation. So for lighting we go back to this now now we're going to be looking at this table for lighting we can take 90% of the total current demand so the two circuits of lighting equals 17.94 amp 90% of that times 0.9 drops it down to 16 amp so we saved just under 2 amp wow Next, cooking appliances. Now, if you go to that table, it tells you you take 100% full load of the largest, 80% full load of the second largest, and then 60% full load of all of the remaining cooking appliances. So in this case, we're going to have to take 100% full load of that big 66.6 .6 amp. That's still not ideal, but we've got to. We'll then take the second largest, which was the 17.39 amp, and we'll apply 80% to that. 17.39 times 80% brings that down to 13.9 amp. Slight shaving there. And then the remaining, well in this case there's only one left, 8.3 amps, we take 60% of. So 8.3 times 60% is 4.98. And we'll add all those together. And that'll bring us 85.48 amps, which will go over there for diversity. Next, the power circuits. Power circuits, which is right at the bottom of that table, you'll see it says you take 100% of the full load of the largest appliance 
and 75% full load of all the remaining. Well, they are of the same demand. So you just take one of them, 12.5 appliances, and you put that aside. And then the remaining two, which is two of them is 25 amps, you apply 75% to two. So 25 times 75% is 18.75. Add that 12.5 back, 31.25 amp. Throw that up there. So this is diversity for the lighting, the cooking, and the power. Next one, socket outlet circuits. Now this is where we're going to say, right, this is to the arrangement of Appendix H, which is uh, fine. But if you look at the actual table, which is on the, 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 the next page of the on-site guide, it tells you for small shops and catering, uh, small offices and things, we take 100% current demand of the largest circuit. Now, again, this could be a 32 amp ring with a 20 amp radial next to it. So you take the 32 amp. Yeah. But in this case, they're all 20. So we take 100% of the largest, the 20, and 50% of the remaining. So we have the four 20 amp circuits. We take one 20 amp out, leaving us with three 20 amp circuits, which is 60 amp. And we do half of that which is 30 amp, and we add that 30 amp back to the 20 amp, 50 amp. Okay, this is diversity with power circuits. Just actually going back to this one, remember earlier on we said oh, it was, uh, it was uh, 37.5 amp, wasn't it? If we did it all on one circuit, by applying diversity we have managed to drop that a little bit. So going on a single circuit basis for each of those has worked out better. Okay, circuit demand, overall diversity, the total of that, there we go. So, for this small catering shop, we're going to require a supply that can accommodate a maximum potential demand of 182 amp. This is purely down to their cooking demand, really, of, as you can see, of 85 amp. Now, remember, if we bunk that down to three phase, we'd be taking 40 amp off of that. That's good, but it's still well over 100 amp. So if they had a 100 amp supply, then you could question it might not be large enough on a three phase. I mean, it would be fine on three phase because you'd take all the other loads off of the phases, so it'd probably be fine. But for the single phase, 100 amp is no good. So if there is a single phase supply on this existing catering unit and it has 100 amp on it, it's clearly, it clearly probably wasn't a catering unit before and it's been changed of use or something then they're going to have to have an upgrade to their supply. Most likely though, small catering shops, you'll see 100 amp supply, but it'll be three phase, and all this will be balanced on those phases. This just shows you the, the importance of having three phase systems on little shops, little catering units, etc. Uh, but here's our answer, here's our, um, here's our result. Okay. Um, Again, uh, thanks to the couple of guys who mentioned who, who literally took seconds to say, oh, that's not right, that's not right. It's good that you guys can see these and immediately crunch numbers and, and say, that's wrong, because that's, that's you know, there's no point in you all just going, oh, this must be right because it's on YouTube. Uh, well done with that. And I will probably put, I mean, we've had like seven, two, three, nine, six videos, I think, probably on the spin. So I'm probably going to take a, vid, a, a break from the 2396 as I prepare outcome 4 because I want to do another a video next on I want to discuss uh, grouping factors again because uh, I'm seeing some, some evidence of it not being considered a lot I will also do another video on um, the wine regulations 18th edition because they've just announced what's coming out in the 18th edition just, just last week so I just want to do a little video on that and then we'll pick up 2396 again but uh, uh, thank you guys and I apologise for the the delay in this and it being re-uploaded but uh thanks a lot and i'll uh, uh see you soon